I'm the Model Officer and this is episode 15 of How I Do Dioramas. So welcome back for this week's extended episode and in this episode we're going to concentrate on some extra detail for our church. Starting with our windows, as you can see from this picture, our stained glass windows have received bomb damage. Now how would we achieve that? Here we have some old sprue, a candle, a lighter and a pair of pliers. Now this is a really well known and well used technique. All you're going to do is you're going to heat up our sprue or our leftovers from our kits and we're going to stretch them. Now some people don't know how to do this so let me demonstrate with this spare piece I've got here. Really simple, all you do is you just place the sprue over the heat making sure you turn the sprue round and round so you get a nice even heat. As soon as it starts to bend like that you just gently pull it apart. Now you do need to put a little bit of pressure on this and it will take some practice for you to get it right. Once you've got the diameter that you want just hold it in position keeping it nice and tall while that plastic dries and cures and cools down. Once it's cooled down, you should be able to just place it on the bench. So let me show that again. Hold the sprue just above the flame, making sure you don't burn your fingers, and turning that sprue round and round so it gets a nice even warmth all the way through. You'll notice a slight bit of sweating and then it will start to bend and become malleable. Once you get to that point, all you do is just pull both ends away from each other nice and slowly in a steady pace and when you get that diameter you want as I said just hold it there let that plastic cool down and then once you're ready we can place it on the bench with the other ones I've already prepared So here you can see some wire, it's 0.11 of a millimetre in diameter. Let's try that against some of our spray that we've just stretched. So there you go, 0.21 of a millimetre and you can get it thinner with a lot of practice but that'll be okay for what I need. Let's head over to our windows. We're gonna use that sprue we've just stretched and we're gonna make the lead lining of our stained glass windows. All I'm gonna do here is just place down our two starting points on either side, making sure I've used a bit of masking tape or in this case, tape, modeling tape to firmly fix the two ends and keep that, A, keep it nice and taut, but also make sure it keeps to the line. Then all I'm gonna do is just use some of that sprue that I've stretched, a little bit of Tamiya Extra Thin, and just let that melt the plastic together to form the bond. The great part about Tamiya Extra Thin is the capillary axiom in which you can use, and I am literally only dabbing on as very little as possible. The reason for using the coloured photocopy is not only to follow the pattern but also it gives me the opportunity for any excess glue to be soaked up with that paper. So this is just a very long task of fitting in piece by piece and following the pattern of the window beneath. The interesting point in which I discovered while looking into stained glass windows, the actual figure on this particular window is not 
you've got the lead lining um, it's actually painted on glass so that's going to make it easier when I come to replicating the lead or framework to this stained glass window as I go further up the picture but the bottom here is quite delicate lots of small pieces So as I say, I'm just gluing the sprue into place using some tweezers to manipulate exactly where I need it. Dab of glue, and then we just cut any of the extra sprue that we don't need anymore at the point of the edge. Then dabbing that again with a little bit of glue and putting it in place. It looks really fiddly and looks really difficult, but I assure you, it really isn't that difficult. It just takes a little bit of time and a little bit of patience. So you can see a closer view of the window that we're constructing. I'm sorry for the hands in the way, but as you can imagine, trying to film this in a way in which you don't get my fingers all over it and in the camera shot is nigh on impossible. I did try several times. So at this point we're going to do a little bit more than just the box, offset box pattern if you like. We're going to try and replicate the scroll. So I think the pictures speak for themselves, I'm just going to let you watch this, enjoy. So there you go, the finished piece. That's ready to go on our church. So placing on the church is really simple. We're just gonna pop it on the back. Now, I have made the framework just a little bit bigger on purpose. The reason for that, it gives me the ability to glue the actual frame to the outside of the window, giving a little bit more of a 3D effect, but also gives me a little bit more sturdy, um, gives it a little bit more structure. And there's the finished products in the window. Now on to our next piece of detail. Here in the picture you can see we have some um, railings or balustrade if you like on the church uh, beginning of the altar. I want to try and replicate that in some way. It's not going to be identical to this picture but let's head over to the bench and see what we can knock out. So let's crack on with that balustrade. We're going to use my trusty cutter um, first of all, we're going to cut up some evergreen scale models, polystyrene strips. Uh, this particular one is 0.38 by 2 mil in diameter. And we're going to cut that to 9 centimeters in length for the bottom and top, and approximately 2 centimeters for the sides. Um, obviously, we are going to do a little bit of infill in the middle, and that's slightly smaller, but I'll be honest, I forgot to measure that. Then to add to that, we're going to use some 6.5 mil polystyrene tubing, which we're going to cut to the same diameter or same width rather of our strips. Now 
Then again, using our extra thin glue from Tamiya, that's going to help weld these pieces together. So starting with the little rings in which we've made, dot a little bit of Tamiya extra thin in the gaps to hold them together. In this I'm using a couple of rulers to try and make sure they stay square. Then we're going to get our strip that we cut for the top or the bottom and we're just going to lay that along one side. Now I've used the ruler to try and help keep it upright and again once I'm happy with its position a little bit of dot and dab in with our Tamir Extra Thin. So that's one part. So the next part I'm just going to repeat the same process. Cut some more of those rings from our 6.5mm uh, tubing. And again line them up and glue them up with that extra thin. So once we've got those and they're set, what we're going to do now is we are going to use a little bit more of that same 0.38 by 2mm strip, uh, slightly smaller in length than the sides, and we're just going to slot that in the middle of our two rings. And follow that process all the way along. And one thing, I, word of warning I would say in this point, don't try and rush it like I have here. There's no point. Glue a couple in one end, so you've got uh, the end piece and your first piece in the ring. And then put one the other end. And then once you've got a couple in, you can start slotting them in quite easily and quite quickly. It's an easy process to do. It looks really complicated and it doesn't take that much time to do. So now we've got our end piece glued on there. Looks, design looks quite good as it is, but I want to make it just a little bit more special. So with a scalpel, I'm just going to cut the ring inside at an angle, and then I'm going to copy that onto the other side of the ring. You'll see what I mean in a second. Just a little dab of glue just to make sure the fixing is correct. And there you go. And this is how it looks in the position of the church. So you've got your window there and then down to our balustrade, which is all ready for priming and painting. So there you go, some cracking detail for the church in this week's extended episode. Just to make up a little bit for the shortfall last week. My apologies, but these things happen. Anyway, one more episode to go in this series and you can see a sneak preview of the shadow box just over my shoulder here, which I'll introduce to you properly next week and I hope a reveal of the final build, if time allows. Might be the week after, but we'll see. Depends on how more mad things I come up with. Anyway, if you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe to the channel and press that bell icon so you don't miss out on any content. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for commenting. I read them all, I comment back to you, and I do enjoy the conversation and feedback. So please, please keep them coming. Anyway, for this week, 
I'm going to get a cup of coffee because I'm gagging. Until next week, take care.